Today I'll show you how to make your own undercook for your hammer. Do you want undercook like this? You can make it by yourself. You can watch this video and you will know in detail how to make one. It's ultimate undercooked. It's full tutorial in this video. So, I'm gonna show you how to make this one and it's very cheap. I spent about 30 euros to make one. As you can see, it has a primary suspension and secondary suspension, as well as closed ends. It's very roomy, it's around two meters long. Of course you can fit this under quilt to any hammock because I have two hammocks, one is two meters, that's for my kids, another one is three and a half meters long and it's adjustable, you can put it on both of them, no problem. And one more thing, wait till the end, there will be some bonus tip how to make ghetto under quilt without sewing. Just wait till the end, okay? Peace. So for this project you're gonna need some sleeping bag. This is cheap sleeping bag from Home Depot. It cost me about 14 euros. You're also gonna need some shock cord. This is 3 millimeters. I would suggest 4 millimeters, but at the time I have only 3 millimeters. It's no problem. It's so shock cord. Also some Dacron straps as this. And also you're gonna need some uh, some material, this this is some kind of nylon, some ripstop or something, whatever. So that's it you're gonna need for this. And of course sewing machine. And don't forget the scissors. So first things first. It is best if your sleeping bag is rectangular shape, like envelope type. So the first thing is, you need to get rid of zipper, you don't need it. Also you don't need some straps like that, just cut them off. So first thing you need to do, you cut all zipper all the way around. You can leave it if you want, but you will save some weight, it will be about 50 grams. I forget to mention, this sleeping bag is 220 centimeters long and 70 centimeters wide. Some cheap sleeping bag. Take your scissors and cut all zipper off. You just cut off this metal part. Don't worry about that dacron that stays over there. It's, it's quite thin. It weighs nothing. Oh, it's plastic. <laughs> Whatever. You're cutting off this, just this part. You don't need it. Don't hurry. Just do. It's like meditation, you know. <laughs> And if you accidentally cut into your sleeping bag, it's not a problem. This whole sleeping bag will be sandwiched between materials, so it's not a problem at all. So as you can see, this whole thing is extra weight you don't need. Also, as you can see, this particular sleeping bag have this hood. We don't need it at all. For this project, we need rectangular shape. We need to just cut it off. Nothing fancy, just cut. So this whole thing is extra weight, you don't need it. Of course you can skip all this sleeping bag thing. Maybe you can buy some insulation and just sandwich it between your material. But uh, my method is to use cheap sleeping bag. Also I like that there will be extra layers from the both sides and it's easier to work with. You don't need to think about anything, just buy a cheap sleeping bag and sandwich it between your materials. You also don't need a sewing machine, you can do it by your hand if you want. <laughs> but it will be very long time, I know. <laughs> so the idea is... Just lay your material on the ground and put a sleeping bag on the top. 
So now just take uh, the end of the material and fold it over like so. And the last thing in this stage, you need to cut off the end you don't need. Just be careful, you find your end of your sleeping bag and leave maybe two and a half centimeters or so. Mia. Oh, my girl, oh, she loves me. Oh my God. <laughs> So the next thing you need to do, you take a needles and fix everything in place. So it will be easier for you to sew it with the sewing machine. You can skip this step, but uh, I'm suggesting you to do so. So you need needles like this. If you don't have them, ask your mom, okay? So like this, you take it. And now you can see there is a sandwich. There is the ripstop material, there is your sleeping bag, and again ripstop material or some nylon. To take your needle, push all the way through and then all the way through back like this. And you're doing that uh, needle thing all the way around. It will be easier for you, believe me. Okay. So next will be sewing with the sewing machine. This is my son's hammock. It's only two meters long. It's a bit small for me, yeah? But I will show you anyway. As you can see, it covers me completely. <laughs> it's a it's perfect amount of space between the hammock and the underquilt. When I place my hand, the hammock is touching one side of my hand and underquilt is touching other side of the hand. Also, this underquilt is quite wide. I easily can use it when laying diagonally. It's very hard to show you with this small hammock, but you will get the idea. <laughs> I forgot to mention, you need some rope, something like this. I think it's six millimeters in diameter. You can use some climbing rope if you want, something enough thick. My daughter likes the underquilt as well. <laughs> <laughs> also want to mention all your foldings make them all on one side don't make one folding on this side the next side you fold to other side everything on one side so that will be your inner part of your under quilt okay then see you on next stage that will be sewing I know it, it sounds maybe frustrating but actually it's very easy just ask your mom how to do it okay it's, if I can do it you can do it Okay? But you can uh, do everything by hand stitching if you want, okay? <laughs> but I'm not suggesting it. It will be time consuming. Okay, see you then on the next stage of this project. See ya. So I made this underquilt for my son and he will try it for first time. I like it. So, like I said, the next stage will be sewing with a sewing machine. Don't be afraid of that thing. It's only a sewing machine, okay? You just press pedal down and sew. Just focus. It's just a straightforward thing. You just need to sew the line where did you put your needles. Just primitive line. Nothing fancy, just go around.
done. Now we'll make the, the short ends. Since one end it's already fine. Let's go to other. So on this end we have extra fabric, like overlay. We can take this fabric and fold over and fold one more time and then sew it together. That's it. It's so easy. Of course it depends how much extra fabric you have. For example here this is already short and this is longer. That's even better actually because there will be less material and easier to work with. So you take that longer one, fold it over and then fold it and sew it here. Of course at first you need to fix this in place with the needles and that way it will be much easier to work with. So I'm gonna put the needles all the way on the short end and I will sew it together. So that's it. The first stage of the sewing is over. So we've done the short ends of the quilt. So they should look something like this. So material is very smoothly around. On other short end it's already around because we were folding, remember that material around. So easy peasy. On the next stage we're gonna work with long ends of the quilt. We're gonna put inside that rope. I think the best is something around eight to 10 millimeters. Oh, but that's it for me today. I'm gonna continue tomorrow because I want to go to sleep. And I'm going to test out my handmade quilt. I'm gonna sleep in a hammock. At the moment it's eight degrees Celsius and I hope it will drop to five degrees Celsius. See you later then. Peace. So let's keep our project going. But before we start, I wanna say my first thoughts about the underquilt I was testing this night. So everything was super nice, super comfy. It works. Temperature this night was 4.9 degrees Celsius with a quite high humidity. Humidity was around 95%. Not a problem to stay down to 5 degrees Celsius. It was fine. And I was wearing only thin base layer, thermal socks and a beanie. And I was using my autumn sleeping bag Nautilus with comfort rating of 3 degrees Celsius. We have sewn this material all the way around. And we also done the short ends by folding material around. So let's do our long sides of the quilt. The next step, remember I told you you need to leave about two inches or five centimeters material longer than it's your sleeping bag. So you need to figure out which side you were folding your material. In this case, I was folding to this side. So this is the inside of my quilt. And you need to fold all the sides to this side, okay? So since we are folding to this side, we need to cut off this extra material. So just cut the same size as is your sleeping bag, that's it. Okay, done. So the next thing is very easy, it's just straightforward. You need to fold this longer piece inwards on half and then fold it over your under quilt, like so. And you ended up with very nice folding, see? And now you need to fix this in place with the needles and then sew it together. Let's do this on both sides. Quite nice looking blanket. Okay, it's time for next stage. So at this stage we ended up with a very comfortable blanket, military style, olive green, synthetic, vegan friendly. 
so the next part is to make channels for our shock cords for the suspension system. Lay down your blanket on a straight surface with the folded side up, so this is the inside for the quilt. Here you can see this fold, okay? So with the folds up, just leave it straight. Then take your rope and tie a knot on the one end. You can tie some, something bigger here, some stick or something, to prevent it sliding in. Place your rope on the blanket, four centimeters, like so. So you measure four centimeters and place your rope. And then just fold it over and secure with needles. Easy peasy. Do it longwise on both sides of your quilt. I already done one side with the rope running through the channel. When you will sew it with your sewing machine, sew closer to this end. That way you will create a bigger channel for your shock cord. It will be more versatile. So next thing, take your 15 millimeters wide Dacron strap and cut four pieces from it, about 15 centimeters long. So make four pieces of it. So the next is melt those ends with your lighter. You're gonna need them for secondary suspension system. The next thing, you fold your straps in the middle and slide them into the channel, like so, by leaving about two centimeters outside. And remember, keep those straps away from the cord. You need to place them as much far as possible to this side, like so. And then just sew a rectangular over here. You can do also a cross if you want, just sew a rectangular. But be careful, now it's uh, quite a lot of material. It's very easy to break your needles on your sewing machine. And also you can mess up your sewing machine, so be careful. See you then later when it's done. should end up with something like this. So the rope is going through the channel and the Dacron strap is sewed on with a rectangular shape. This is the hardest part of it all. To do it properly you need some fancy sewing machine. In my case I needed to do it with my hand. I was rolling slowly sewing machine with the hand. If I use electricity I already broke three needles. <laughs> Just for one strap I broke three needles. So, <laughs> it's better to do it slowly with the hand. I was not using the pedal, but I turned by the hand slowly. So, as you can see, on the one end of the rope we have a knot, which is preventing to slide it in. On the other side we've got a, maybe another two or three meters of rope. At this stage we can take that long rope and place it on the other side of the quilt. And again, four or five centimeters, fold it over and then fix it with the needles and sew it together. So the same thing like on the other side. That's it. So far it's done. Now it's the fun part. Now we're gonna lead the shock cord through the channels. It will be endless loop. Since I have only three millimeter shock cord, it's more advisable to use a four millimeter. From the experience, I've better double this one up. So for the main suspension, I'm gonna use double, double three millimeter shock cord. This shock cord is 10 meters long. So now I'm gonna untie the knot we made before. Now you need to attach the shock cord to your rope to lead it through the channel. I think the best way is to make a knot, just a simple knot, like so. Okay, and then you take your loop of the shock cord and fold it like this. So put it on and tie it very strong as you can. So that's it. Now we take opposite side and pulling.
so done. And now we just need to keep moving. So from the this side we are pulling to channel over here. So in total it will be continuous loop. Just be careful, don't let this end of the shock cord go into your channel, it will be very hard to get it out. The best way to prevent this is to tie this shock cord to this tub. Like so. And now you need just tie together these two parts. This is the loop and this is two, two ends. Like so. Now you end up with the underquilt with a continuous loop. So now just left the easiest part. These are the short ends of your quilt. This is the easiest thing. And again, use your rope. Same thing. Place it here, about 4 centimeters. Fold it over and sew it. And here, just before the ends, you just stop there, that's it, it's, it's okay. And here it's like 45 degrees. I've used three millimeters for this part. Three millimeters will be enough for this part. And then I'm suggesting to tie the end to the this tab. And later on you can adjust it depending on your needs, on your hammock. Also there's the option, you can get away just with the tying, but it would be smart to use something like this. Lead them through and then tie this down to this tab for extra security. So same goes for the other side. Just lead it through. Then tie the shock cord to this tab. So you end up with this bungee style and which one you can adjust with these tabs. Now the same thing for the other side. The next stage will be fitting on. Our quilt is nearly finished. So as it goes for setting up, you can use some small carabiners over here or you can just place it on your main carabine. Like so. And the same for the other side. Since the main suspension is a single loop, Okay, it's double loop, <laughs> so it's continuous. You can slide it in the position you need, like that. So at the first we need to find our spot we are laying in. So to the one side a little bit. Something like this. As you can see, this underquilt is quite wide, so you can easily lay down in diagonally, as you can see. Of course, you can adjust these straps to, to get more tight fit. But for now, the last thing we need to attach the secondary suspension. I think it's smarter to do it now, because now we, we see the position always like that. When you're making some video, somebody is moving his own. <laughs> so now we know the position of the underquilt. So one end is longer than other because it's a foot end and the head end. So on the foot end there will be a longer suspension than it's in head end. Now we need to just attach to these tabs. And three millimeters is sufficient for this. So now it's a very easy task. Just take your, take your shock cord and lead it through the carabiner and give it a little bit tension and tie to the other tab on the other side, that's it. So give it a little tension, cut it off, just feed it through this tab and tie it down. Give it a few knots, be sure. Then melt the ends of the shock cord. It's also possible to put here tensioners for adjusting, but also you can adjust over here. If you need to shorten this, just make a knot over here, that's it. Or you can use some tensioners with adjustable function over here. That's your choice. Just 
first we'll check if the position is right. Seems good to me. So doing the same thing, tie it down here to these tabs, give it a few times just to be sure, and lead it through this carabine. Then give a little bit tension, not too much. It's better if it's longer than shorter because you can adjust it later. But if you cut it too short, it's not a big deal because you can put a paracord over there to make extension. It's not a problem at all. Our ultimate underquilt is nearly ready. This is the last knot for it. Can you imagine? We've done it together. So give it a few times. Done. So with the primary suspension, we can adjust the height of it to get it closer to your body. And with the secondary suspension, we can adjust it longwise. Let's try this thing out. It fits perfect. It's wide and fully adjustable and fits any hammock. Of course, there is another version of underquilt you can make it without sewing, but it's not adjustable, it's not so cool. But you can make it. Okay, it goes like that. You just take your sleeping bag and get some plastic bottle caps. You just place them on a corner, then fold the material over. I'll show you. I'll show you ghetto technique. Imagine this is sleeping bag. This is a corner of your sleeping bag, but you need a sleeping bag that can open like envelope, rectangular. Imagine this is a plastic cap from a bottle, okay? You just place it like this. You can use some stones if you want, some not sharp things, but plastic bottle caps are lightweight. So then imagine this is a rope or shock cord. So. See? Make it loop like this. And tie it. That's it. And do it on your four corners. And then attach to your hammock. Okay? Here you go. So, our project is finished. Now you know how to make your own underquilt. There's gonna be a giveaway to the one of mine very supportive subscriber. He also have a hammock and he will enjoy this one, I think. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If any questions, leave the comments down below. That's it. Peace.